resistant to the air. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting of the Raton City Commission to order. Could we have a roll call, please? Yes. Sure. Mayor Sagata? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Schuster? Present. Commissioner Chavez? Present. Commissioner Giacomo? Present. And Commissioner Chatterley? Present. Thank you. Could you all please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 All right. All right. A couple of announcements. We want to thank everybody for being here tonight. All city offices will be closed Monday, July 4th in observance of Independence Day. Our next regular commission meeting will be Tuesday, July 12th, 6 p.m. here in the chambers. And we also have a notice of potential quorum. Public notice is hereby given that a quorum of the Raton City Commission may attend a capital project update with Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham on Friday, July 1, 2022, in the Commission Chambers from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we also have a proclamation this evening. Proclamation for Lemonade Day, July 2nd, 2022. Whereas Lemonade Day is a free community-wide educational event providing children with the opportunity to learn and apply entrepreneurial thinking and create a foundation for success in the global economy. And whereas Lemonade Day exists to infuse today's youth with a spirit of enterprise, teaching the basic business and entrepreneurial skills necessary to become successful, contributing members of the community. And whereas Lemonade Day offers opportunities for families, businesses, schools, youth organizations, neighborhoods, institutes of higher learning and government agencies to unite for a common purpose to train the next generation of entrepreneurs. And whereas the city of Raton commends the volunteers and participants of the Lemonade Day and extends best wishes for a successful and rewarding event. Now therefore do I, James Neal Sagata Jr., Mayor of the city of Raton, hereby proclaim July 2nd, 2022 as Lemonade Day in the city of Raton and urge all citizens to participate by either buying or helping children sell lemonade. Witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Raton to be affixed this 28th day of June 2022. Alrighty. Come on, guys. Just don't be bashful. Who wants to, who wants to help me hold this? Take a look at that. They're super cute, fun. Thank you so cool. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting if you don't want to. Yeah. Pretty excited. <laughs> you, you, you can, can but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Commissioners that apply to being Desiree. No. No. Sorry. <laughs> sorry you guys are sorry. stuck here for the duration. <laughs> I thought for a second. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go to committee reports. Commissioner Chatterley. Okay. I attended the North Central New Mexico Economic Development District board meeting on June 24th on Zoom. Everyone had just returned, including the mayor, I guess, from the advisory council and provider meeting and innovation summit that was in Bernalillo for three days and it yes. was a big event and it went well. It went very well. Good things. Real right well. Here. Good things. Uh, good. Uh, the new hires Didn't are mentioned including, <laughs> including Mayor Sagata, who begins July 5th as the new AAA director. Uh, they're doing an overhaul of their website to make it more user friendly. They had a few budget adjustments. Uh, most other action items were tabled, 
because they got this new Title III contract tracked for funding and it had um, some new provisions in it with mm. expanding scope of work and responsibilities, especially in regard to emergency planning. And so kind of all the other contracts fall under there and a little bit frustrating, but they're trying to negotiate um, that contract and make sure they get their Title III monies lined up as soon as possible. So on Thursday, they'll be doing that. Um, their telework policy was updated with better parameters. They're having a lot of success with telework and it's really interesting. They have kind of a rotating schedule of who's coming into the office um, when, and everybody has a cell phone so they can you know, get a hold of people all the time so no client uh, needs are met uh, are left unmet, but they kind of are um, different employees. When they, if they need to come in the office, they're being a little bit more common sense with hours and how long it would take them to get there because they have a lot of people working outside of Santa Fe now. Sorry, my phone did, did the spinny thing. Come back. Okay. North Central is also working with Colfax and Mora counties on hazard mitigation plans so that they're able to apply for FEMA recovery funding for the wildfire impact. So that's extremely important, uh, ongoing right now. Um, they're working with a rental assistance program through New Mexico CARES for people who lost homes in the fires. It will be based on criteria such as disability or people who have school-aged children or vulnerable, vulnerable individuals. They're trying to get people out of hotels and into homes or rental units as soon as possible. And so they have a little bit of funding to help with that. We'll meet again August 26th. I attended the New Mexico Municipal League Policy Committee on June 25th in Albuquerque. Um, compared to pre-COVID, it was a smaller group, um, but I thought it w ran very well. They did a good job streamlining some things. I served on the Community Economic Development, Governmental Operations, Public Infrastructure, and Human Resources Committee, and we worked on 25 resolutions. Um, we decided that anything related to the Whistleblower Protection Act would be moved to policy because there's no progress with that with legislation. Um, we deleted four other resolutions and moved one to another committee. We spent a lot of time discussing resolutions related to annexation. Some of the bigger cities are having a lot of that going on. Uh, street recapture, airport hangar code, um, turning stormwater into a utility as a designation, and the para return to work problem that everyone was very heated on that one. Um, the league had kind of said, let's let it go, but everyone said, absolutely not. Um, we need to figure out a solution to that because everybody is having a hard time filling open positions, especially skilled jobs. There was somebody there who had six engineering positions open in their city, so they're just having a really hard time with that. And I know part of it's due to parasolvency issues, but certainly there's got to be some, some way to figure that out. Um, we also discussed broadening language with some resolutions that come back year after year or working with certain departments at the state level to correct problems outside of the legislative process. Um, there, the resolutions that we had brought in 2019 regarding rural workforce, everyone decided to combine those, kind of change the population so it was a lot bigger population but keep the median household income language the same. Um, and because everyone was concerned about rural job creation, ironically, even though it's hard to fill jobs, <laughs> they're just, it's a tough balance right now. Um, I believe the next meeting will be when the Resolutions Committee meets on July 30th. And the Colfax County Senior Citizens Board met June 2nd, but I was not able to attend. And that's my report. Thank you. Commissioner Giacomo. <coughs> the Public Service Company Board of Directors meeting was held on June 22nd, 2020, at 5.30 p.m. Bob and Osborne, RPS manager, office manager slash bookkeeper presented to and approved by the Board of Financial and Statistical Information. RPS General Manager Dave Mancino reported to the Board the results of the Schedule 4 unit test run, which, is, which went well. He also reported that the cooling tower teardown went well and cleanup is being done now. Dave did, uh, Dave did have some research on some solar panels and discussed with the board. He also did some comparisons of the power usage with different sources. And uh, there were no, there was no library board meeting this month, so that's the only report. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Chavez. Yes, uh, myself and Mayor Pro Tem Schuster attended the water uh, board meeting 
on June 21st, we found out that the water, the water department crews replaced an old sewer main on Stevens, replaced the valve at the ballpark, replaced the filter at the water uh, plant. They uh, also reported that the water chemicals that we use to tr treat the water has, has almost doubled now, and so it's really an uh, increase in price. And then the New Mexico Department of Finance approved the budget for the fiscal year 2022 and 23. That's the Water Department. Do you have anything to add, Mayor? No, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Also attended the Financial Advisory Board meeting on June 23rd. We reviewed the financials for May 2022 and approved for submission to the City Commission on tonight's meeting. That's all I have. Mayor Pro Tem. Very good. So um, I believe the um, Lodgers Tech's meeting was the 22nd, wasn't it? I believe so, yes, ma'am. Sorry, I didn't keep track, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a busy week. Yeah, it's, the recommendation is in here. So I didn't make it to the actual meeting, but got here it before. It was June 15th. Oh, okay. Got here before everybody left, and so I was filled in and up to date on what they're working on, and I will discuss that a little bit later on, their um, recommendations. July 24th, Commissioner Chavis and I were also at the um, the uh, ribbon cutting at the uh, transfer station, thank you, transfer and recycling station. Everybody is very happy to have that back up and running, and uh, we have a lot of a lot of uh, good recycling going on. We don't right now. We're not still not taking paper, but they are taking cardboard, uh, motor oil, paint, um, tin, and aluminum cans, etc. And, and of course, general waste. So um, paper will come later. I'm sure as soon as it becomes at least a break-even proposition. But um, <laughs> we got that ribbon cut and. It's open. Hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 7.30 to 3.30, open through the lunch hour, and then Saturday, 10 to 2, for non-commercial use only. Thank you. I should write these things down. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the morning of July 24th, and then July 25th, I also went to the New Mexico Municipal League Policy. June. July, thank you. June. 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 Oh, yes, you're right. It's still June. <laughs> it's been a really busy month. <laughs> I'm really busy. <laughs> anyway, uh, the policy meeting on Saturday, and um, I was assigned uh, and chose to be on the Environment, Energy, and Natural Resources Committee. But there were so f there were enough there to make decisions, but there were so few on that. Uh, committee, as well as the finance and in, uh, intergovernmental relations and taxation, that we combined those two. And so we talked about a very long list of policies, but made very few changes. There were just some language cleanups, on, uh, especially taxation. The most important one there was uh, maintaining the hold harmless and hoping that stays intact. And then on the natural resources, um, nothing earth shattering there. We talked about the cost of the um, chemicals going up as well and hoping that, that can, the uh, state can help a little bit with that as well as um, there's some talk about some communities would like to be able to add in uh, nuclear power if needed. But I think there already there's already a plant in Colorado, right? Uh, there is a plan for an, a plant in Kemmer, Wyoming. Right, and right. so there's um, getting energy from one that exists is a lot cheaper than getting building a new one. So um, that was a the lengthiest part of the discussion. So, and that's about it. Right. Thank also, you. Uh, you might say that our we had that grand <coughs> opening and ribbon cutting. And we had our first real good recycle of a skunk that yes. decorated the inside of the building, and it was really fun to be in there. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. I, you know, and I was Sorry afraid I it that. smelled like that all the time, but no. It was, I, I went, man, this smells kind of skunky. It turns out it was a real skunk. Yeah. 
All right, as for myself, um, like uh, Commissioner Chatterley said, I attended the Area Agency on Aging Conference and Innovation Conference uh, last week, spent the week in Bernalillo. Uh, a lot of focus this year for the seniors is going to be, and the programs is going to be uh, put into outreach and uh, expanding our services. We were trying to discuss how we were going to expand our services and, and meet those needs with current funding level staying the same and everyone having problems getting people to work. So uh, interesting ideas were thrown about, so we'll see what happens there. Um, also, the looking at rebranding, instead of calling us senior centers anymore, coming up with something else like a multi-generational site or, or something because the connotation with senior Senior citizens is just, it, even though you, you meet the criteria, you don't want to call yourself a senior citizen. And that's where we're missing out, we feel, on uh, a lot of opportunities there. Everyone, though, did uh, express that with a grab and go, we are seeing that younger generation come through. The younger seniors that are still working are driving through, picking up their lunch, and going, taking it and going back to work. And that's true at all of our sites here in Colfax County. Um, Scott and I met with the governor's chief of staff, Matt Garcia, a couple of weeks ago just to discuss some economic development projects. He wanted really an update on how it was going with the million dollars that we received for the purchase of the ranch. So we kind of gave him an update on that and just kind of basically filled him in on other things that we're thinking of doing here in, here in Raton. That was a good, fruitful meeting. Uh, Mexico Municipal League Executive Board Committee met. Uh, to discuss the, the policy meeting that was just uh, taking place this last weekend. We did some ranking and some weeding out there. Uh, then we also uh, discussed the budget. And uh, this was meeting was before the board meeting. So, yeah, we discussed the budget and approved it and uh, sent it on to the regular board meeting. Tomorrow I will be in Santa Fe for New Mexico Self-Insurers Fund meeting, uh, discuss some uh, issues that are, have come up in various communities. It's our quarterly meeting and uh, we're going to go through some cases that have possible litigation out there. Other than that, it's been a pretty normal month. <laughs> All righty. Item six, items from citizens' presence. Ask anyone wishing to address the commission to do so at this time. Yes, ma'am. Please come up and state your name for us, please. services. I called them. Aging and Disability Resource Center. I called them. And I called the Lieutenant Governor. And I think Riley needs to quit jumping on me when I have done quite a bit. I've, 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 I've done a lot with not me doing it, but having to hire somebody to do it. And I'll keep working on it. But I don't think that's right. And then here, it says it's against the Supreme Court. I'll leave both with you. But I just don't think it's right for him to uh, do that when I'm trying. And I'm asking that he'll leave me alone. And he, he, he drove on my property about three times before he finally started just driving by. And we got a lot done. I sold three cars. I uh, cleaned up. I wrote a whole page of stuff we've done. And, uh, and we'll keep working on it when I can get the help. But he's got to realize I'm old. 82 is getting old. 
and I can't get around good. And I'm asking that he'll leave me alone till, and, and he, I can keep working on it and you can check on me once in a while. But that's not right because I am going to talk to these people and I just want you to know that ahead of time. I right, appreciate it. And, um, it's been our, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for, but it, as long as you're showing an effort to try and clean up your property, I am, we I, will more than happily work I with you. I paid people and so. everything to come in there and help me, but I can't always get them. And if it's raining, I can't get them. And sure. some days it's pretty and I can't get them. But when I get sure. them, they come and we work. And I think it's something that Mr. Barry and uh, Mr. Riley, we can get together. And as long as progress is being made, I don't think there's could be much of an issue, Mr. Barry. If I have to call these people, I will. Sure. Because I'm old. Sure. And he just keep pushing. He says he's going to charge me this and charge me that and everything in the world. And that's not right when I'm not old. I'm sorry. But that's the way I feel. Appreciate and I'm your call. still working on it. And appreciate I will it. keep working on it. And we do appreciate that a great deal. No. But I cannot do it by myself, mm -hmm. like he says. I'm going to leave this with you. Okay. And I mean that I've already talked to some of them. All righty. Appreciate it. All right. You want me to get that for you? I think that's okay. okay. Get it. Thank you again. I appreciate mm, thank that. You. Thank you. And I just wanted you to know what was happening. Well, we appreciate okay. it. Thank you very but much. I am trying. We, and we, we and thank you for that. Appreciate that. A bunch. Yep. Anyone else wish to address the commission at this time? All righty. Moving into the business section, item 7A. Deliberate and act on approval of June 14, 2022, regular meeting minutes. I'll have a chance to go over the minutes. I did not find any glaring errors. I will move to approve. Motion and a second to approve the minutes. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item B, deliberate and act on event form. Run to Raton, July 21st, 23rd, 2022. Mr. Berry. Uh, Mayor Commission, this is an event that we've had uh, for a number of years now, and uh, it's an event that I think generally has grown over the years and uh, be, has become a, a Pretty important event for uh, Rat Town, scheduled for July 21st through uh, July 23rd, and uh, generally the events will be held uh, on the area of South First Street between uh, Rio Grande and Cook Avenue. So we do have the event organizers uh, present. If you have any uh, questions about that, however, in your in your packet you do see the event checklist, and uh, it has. Uh, been reviewed by staff, uh, and uh, we look at safety of the event and uh, emergency response to an event, and it's been approved by all of the staff that has reviewed this. So our recommendation is approval of the uh, the event uh, checklist that you have in your packet. Cool. Right, any questions? I make a motion to approve. I was going to see if they wanted to say anything but no you guys just you just, you just go on back out of here now do you guys want to tell us a little bit about it or spend a minute and advertise it you better all know by now we, well, we do but this you know we're on five we're on facebook so if you we're want to yeah, five now. it's a great so event cool. it, it is. Right along, it's a good event it's it really a really is. good event all right so we do have a motion and we do have a second anyone wish to address this any further? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Yes. You bet. Item C, deliberate and act on public celebration permits for Renda Raton event, Blue Dragonfly Brewery, and left turn distilling, Palmer Brewery, and Cider House. Mr. Barry. Uh, Mayor and Commission, you have the uh, public celebration permit applications uh, in your packet for uh, both dispensers. Um, these do go to New Mexico Regulation and Licensing Department. However, they do uh, require the consideration of the Rat Town uh, City Commission. So you have those. And uh, again, we're available to answer any questions you might have about the permit applications. 
All right, any questions, comments? Looked like everything was in place, so. I think we just were. I think, hey, it's, I, I think we were it's just better than Scott's, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think we required a few signatures at the end there, so we'll get with you on yeah. that. But. Santa Fe has got really picky on Sounds good. Any other questions, discussion? All in favor, vote by the Santa Monica. All right. Opposed? I think we moved. I thought oh, we moved. We didn't have a move, I I'll thought we did. <laughs> and I'll second. <laughs> okay. So we got a motion. We got a second. Now, any further discussion? No. All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 It's not just me who gets confused. Opposed. <laughs> Motion carries. This is hot in here. It is. It's the rain. It's the rain. <laughs> We're all hot aired. <laughs> <laughs> Item D, deliberate and act on Lodgers Tax Advisory Board recommendations. Mr. Barry. Uh, Mayor Commission, in your packet, you do have a written report from the uh, Lodgers Tax Advisory Board. This is in reference to their meeting on June 15th. Uh, and you have three recommendations uh, in your packet. You can address those individually or together however you would like. Uh, I will read the recommendations or the summary recommendations to you. The Lodgers Tax Board is recommending to the commission that uh, $16,938.86 uh, be allocated to Ratone Main Street. That's from the annual events line item for the Gate City Music Festival and it includes items uh, such as website advertisement, social media advertisement, Ratone Visitor Guide advertisement security, and that will be provided by Ratone Police Department, uh, tent rental, backline equipment rental, and the headliner, uh, Keith Anderson. Uh, furthermore, you have a recommendation from the board to the commission for an expenditure of $6,970 uh, to be uh, awarded to KCRT KBKC Radio for the fiscal year 2023 radio advertisements. That would come from the radio advertisement line item. And then finally, uh, the uh, board is recommending to the commission uh, a couple of billboards. We had talked about these previously. The, the uh, Lodgers Tax Board did formalize their recommendations to the commission. Those recommendations include the rental of uh, billboard panel 18074 that's located on Highway 287 uh, at McPherson Avenue in Dumas, Texas. Also, uh, billboard panel 18502 uh, that would be located at 801 Norman Street and Highway 78 in Dalhart, Texas. They're recommending to you that uh, we would lease these for a three year time period. The rates would be $500 for the first year per billboard. 525 for the second year and 550 dollars for the third year and that would come from the billboard expense line item you do have some details uh in the packet uh and uh we would try to answer any questions main street is uh present here and uh desiree and michael and attend as a meeting if you do have any specific questions okay. any questions or comments and we can probably take these all at once one comment or one question, Mr. Mayor. On the panel 181074, I'm just verifying that it's a right hand read because at the bottom it says it is, but then in the listing it says it reads left. And I'm assuming that it's right and we want right hand reads. So, I don't know if that's a typo on their end or. Commissioner, there are some so. photos uh, in the packet. Right -hand read. Yeah. I'd have to go back to it, but they looked like they were on the, on the right, right. Okay. side. To me, so yeah. it's my understanding that they're right. Yeah, I think, right yeah, I think clearly they they both on are. The part where it says advertising shrinks, they both say right hand. Yeah, they right. Yeah. Just down the right hand side where it says facing read on that one, it says left. You can see that one, eighteen oh seventy four, is located in the in the area. It looks like it was some uh, a grain elevator, and it's off the roadway a bit, but it is on the right hand right. side. I would make a motion to approve all three requests. Okay. A motion and a second to approve all three requests. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.
Thank you. Item E, deliberate and act on lodger's tax non-promo fund request by Raton Main Street for the balloon rally. Mr. Barry. Uh, Mayor and Commission, generally, uh, I, I do want to call on Raton Main Street to uh, address their letter to the Commission, and I'll just summarize that. There is a uh, request, uh, and uh, this would be in, uh, in regard to supply of propane, I believe, correct? And so the, the uh, group is here to request some additional funding. And, and this is sort of a last minute request because uh, the, the original uh, propane provider is not able to provide that service. And so there is a backup plan for propane here. However, there's a cost associated with that. Uh, ladies, I don't know if you could come forward and uh, do a better job of explaining it than I've done. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Commissioners, good evening. Um, yeah, we are, of course, in our, um, what is this, like the ninth year organizing our balloon fleet. <clears throat> of course, Main Street took that over in 2013. And since 2013, Northern New Mexico Gas Company has been our propane provider each and every one of those years, donated all their propane all those years to all the pilots that we've had over a period of three days of flying, knock on wood that we fly this year. Um, so this year, we, she was on, uh, Northern Mexico Gas was on board to provide the propane up until due to unforeseen problems or an issue, um, they came across just nine days prior to this rally, we were informed that they would not be able to provide the propane this year. She referred us to a couple of other propane companies, and so we did contact Pinnacle <coughs> Propane and um, after um, a very stressful day, <laughs> Pinnacle Propane did agree to provide the propane for the 13 pilots that are coming this year. Um, it is, of course, at a cost. Mm -hmm. um, now, prior to this rally, because of the cost of propane and because of the cost of gas, we had already informed the pilots that um, propane would be provided to them for two days out of the three. So they would come full and leave empty. So propane is necessary for the pilots on Saturday and Sunday. And these 13 pilots that are coming this year are well aware of that expense. Um, we wish we could have more, but because of those costs, there were several pilots who were not able to make it this year. But we do need additional help to pay for that propane. Now Pinnacle Propane is providing it at a discount, and so they're going to keep track of the number of gallons that every pilot um, needs to refuel for both days. And hopefully we fly every morning. Um, after that, the, they, the pilots go to the propane truck and they refuel their tanks. Um, at the end of the rally, then Pinnacle Propane um, will provide us with an invoice as to the number of gallons that have been used and that we need to pay for. So we've come before you to ask for assistance in this additional cost that we, of course, never anticipated. Sure. So there's our story. Hey, Mayor Commission, if I could add one comment. Uh, there was some discussion before the meeting. The agenda uh, indicates that that would be funded from the non-promotional fund, and there was some discussion about uh, reassigning that to promotional funds, and I think there's concurrence of city staff that that would be revised to the promotional funds. Yeah, I don't see any issue with that. It, we're promoting while we're doing it. So. Right. So. I have a question. You, sure. Is three thousand dollars enough? Um, we. I had a pilot advisor friend of mine, and he figured out the co due to the cost and the number of um, gallons that each pilot usually um, cons or uses uh, while they fly. Um, so he's based um, at that amount, this amount, and it may be even over. So what we're asking for is, is 3000 now, but I mean, you know, we may not even have to use it all. So just based on what each pilot, you know, how long they fly and how much fuel they use, that's the best we could actually come up with. I just um, wanted to know if uh, 3000 was enough yeah, to I do believe, the whole rally. So. He believes in, in, um, that, and I trust him, mm -hmm. and that um, that would be sufficient. Okay. Okay. Very good. Any other questions, comments? Um, make a motion to approve tax non promo fund request by the Main Street for Blue Mail. 
Second. Do you want that motion to be for promotional or not? We want that specified, yes. I thought he said promotion. Oh, sorry. Friendly amendment there, Don, to the promo fund? Yes. All right. So we have a motion and a second to approve the request by Rato Main Street from the promotional fund. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you Looking guys forward for going to through it. that headache. <laughs> Item F, deliberate and act on Amendment 3, Memorandum of Agreement between the City of Raton and the Schuler Restoration Corporation, Mr. Barry. Mayor Commission, this is an item we talked about at the last meeting, and we wound up postponing uh, action on this item. At the last meeting, we said that uh, we entered into a memorandum of understanding with Schuler Restoration Corporation uh, for management of the Shooter Theater. That commenced on uh, August 1st of 2019. It allowed for a base year and then uh, consideration of renewal for three additional years. So uh, this would be the third renewal um, after this runs through this current, this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, we would issue a request for proposals for the management services again. Um, the uh, Shooter Restoration Group had had requested a little more discussion on terms of the memorandum of understanding and there are a couple of things that we would work on as a matter of policy but they are not really reflected in the agreement so we bring back this amendment number three uh, with no changes it would be an extension of the MOA as it has existed since 2019. Okay, thank you any questions or comments for Mr. Barry? Mr. Bill would you like to say anything or? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Pro Tem, uh, Mayor Schuster, Commission, Mr. Barry, Desiree, uh, my fellow Americans. <laughs> uh, we just let it roll. We just let it roll. We love the Schuler Theater, and uh, I think with very few exceptions, things have gone uh, very smoothly with the Schuler restoration. So we'll let this roll next year. I am assuming that the board is going to want to uh, complete the uh, request for proposal and give you another, uh, another addendum and another uh, space for helping the Schuler Theater. So uh, also wanted to say everyone is having trouble finding people working. And we found someone with uh, the aid of Help New Mexico and Josh Duran, our Workforce Connection. So we're doing tours now this summer, Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. So if someone wants to see the Schuler Theater, just send them on down oh. during regular working hours. Nice. Yeah, he's been, been pretty busy here this week. And he's going to be there also on Saturday uh, for this July 4th weekend. So, nice. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, he was a product of our youth theater and the Santa Fe Trail School Youth Theater. They're doing, they're going to do three or four productions this year. The next one is coming July 15th, 16th, and 17th. It's called The Election. So it should be a, a nice uh, parody on things and how, how our world is now. And then they're doing auditions tonight for another one, an adult uh, adult actors, not necessarily an adult. Uh, what are you getting into down yeah. there, Bill? <laughs> sure. Come on down and audition. Good <laughs> <laughs> So they're auditioning tonight, and it's going to be the end of July uh, and the first of August. Moon over Buffalo. It's a it's a comedy. Moon and then we just Buffalo. finished with a very successful Always Patsy Cline. Yep. Was that was very good. good. Yeah, it was uh, one of the best attended and one of the uh, best uh, box office attractions, too, that the Santa Fe Trail School has done. So, Great. Yeah, so we're looking for a good uh, rest of the summer and then on into the fall. And thank you very much. And thank you, Bill, for, you very much. for what you do. Yeah, we appreciate we appreciate it. appreciate that yeah, hard work. Yeah. Any questions for Bill or anybody else? I will move to approve that. Amendment number three, memorandum of agreement between the City of Raton and the Schuler Restoration Corporation, Inc. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Is there any further discussion? 
All in favor, vote by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item G, deliberate and act on Tuscosa equipment lease for Raton City Hall copier, Mr. Berry. Mayor Commission, this is the primary copier located in City Hall, and if you all have been around City Hall, you know that uh, that thing never quits running during the day. We uh, have operated on the existing copier uh, and uh, through a four-year lease that's uh, similar to the one you have in your packet right now, that lease uh, has expired and we would anticipate uh, replacement of that with uh, a new machine under the lease agreement uh, that you have uh, in front of you. So you see the terms are 48-month uh, term uh, at $384.72 per month that does not include tax, maintenance, or supplies. Uh, so answer any questions that you have on that? I've got a, this doesn't include maintenance? Um, it does. Okay. But correct. I was going to say. Yeah, the maintenance, <coughs> maintenance includes parts, labor, drums, and toner, excluding paper, staples, and right. IT services. So there you go. All right. I was going to say. I'll make a motion to approve the Tuscosa equipment lease for the right from City Hall copier. Okay. A motion and a second to approve the lease with Tuscosa for the use of the copier. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item H, deliberate and act on solid waste tipping fee project agreement to extend contract, Mr. Barry. Mayor Commissioner, I will call on our Public Works Director, Jason Phillips, uh, who has worked on uh, this item uh, under uh, Agenda Item H, and then also the next item under I, and so there's a couple of uh, agreements that are related to our solid waste utility. All right. Mayor Commissioner, thank you. Uh, beginning with Item H, this is our first renewal of our tipping fee contract, uh, as you'll remember. Uh, prior to last year, we had uh, been going to Fountain, Colorado with our trash. And last year, uh, Mr. Jonathan Arthur took over the regional landfill based out of Levi and was the low bid for our trash services. This contract is, like I said, our first renewal. It is a renewal based on terms of the contract. There is a CPI that is specifically for water, sewer, and trash rates. And our, our procurement based that in the contract pricing. Uh, in previous years, that CPI averaged about 1.5 to 1.8%, but last year was an exceptional year. So as you can see, um, the CPI for water, sewer, and trash is 3.86 and a lot of decimal points behind that, which would change the base rate of tipping per ton from 27.50 to a new unit rate of 28.56. Um, we estimate that we'll have about 6,000 pounds of MSW hauled and deposited that way. So it is a significant impact on budget, but um, it is in agreement with the terms of the contract and uh, considerably less than the CPI in general, which is hovering around 8% right now. Um, Mr. Arthur has uh, agreed with the numbers as proposed as meeting the CPI and uh, would be willing to accept the contract extension as it is. Uh, a mutual renewal agreement. So I would recommend renewal for that. In addition to um, the cost saved, I mean, we are now a shorter distance from the landfill. We had some worry going on that a local regional landfill might not be able to serve our needs as much as waste management. They're the largest solid waste game on the planet. But uh, we've been really impressed with how Mr. Arthur has handled his business. We've yet to be unable to dump despite any weather conditions, and he's helped out numerous times when we've had some equipment failures. So it's worked out well for us. Our trucks and trailers travel half the distance, and our transport trailers are worth about $100,000 a piece. So every little bit of wear and tear we can save helps the cause overall. So with that, we would recommend a renewal on that one. And Mary Commission, uh, the uh, extension agreement that you have in your packet is formatted for signature by the city manager if you are considering that and you want to add the authority to execute the agreement with your consideration. Alrighty. Any questions for Jason or Scott? Mr. Mayor, I'll be abstaining on these. I'm doing a little work on their website. Alrighty. 
Well, <clears throat> I'll move to approve the um, solid waste tipping fee project. Are we doing these together? No, we didn't. I, okay. I thought I'd give them stuff as a two different contracts. Okay. Along with city manager Scott Berry does sign the agreement. I'll second. Motion and a second to approve the agreement to extend the contract. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item I, Jace, deliberate and act on solid waste transportation project agreement to extend contract. Item I is a little more straightforward. Uh, procurement of the same type with multiple annual renewals. Uh, this is no CPI increase, but in the interest of full disclosure, this contract has built into it a fuel escalator and de-escalator clause. So the price that we paid remains the same. I, I want to say off the top of my head, it's two twenty-five per trip to haul our trailers down. But once you get either plus or minus fifteen percent of the base fuel price at the time of bid, the escalator kicks in. And again, exceptional year. I believe our diesel price at bid time was something around two eighty-six a gallon. We're now four plus on bulk fuel. So uh, the terms of the con of the contract renew for one year. It's also set for City Manager Barry's signature, uh, but again, it's not the same price. It's the two forty a trip. Plus, right now, I think it's averaging about an extra thirty dollars per trip in fuel escalation. So. All righty, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Barry or Mr. Phillips? Any motions? I'll make a motion, and including Scott Barry's signature. A second. Motion and a second to approve the extended the agreement extension with Mr. Berry as the signatory. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Item J, deliberate and act on bid award for West Colfax Avenue resurfacing yes, project. Mr. Berry. Mayor Commission, um, previously we did request bids for the West Colfax Avenue resurfacing project. This is a project uh, that has some grant funds in it through the cooperative agreement program. Um, and uh, in our earlier request, we did not receive a bid uh, for the project. The project consists primarily of uh, asphalt resurfacing of West Colfax. That would be from 2nd Street to uh, the end of Colfax at the uh, railroad tracks uh, past Brilliant Avenue, about three blocks. Um, we did rebid the project, and this time we did receive two bids on the project. Uh, in your packet, you do have a uh, tabulation of the bids. You do have a recommendation from the city clerk to award a, a contract for construction of the project to the low bidder. The low bid was submitted by Northern Mountain Constructors Incorporated. Their bid is in the amount of $125,410, and that does not include uh, the gross receipts tax. Um, our original estimate uh, was about $100,000 on this, and uh, the extra cost is uh, sort of what we've been seeing on, on, uh, on current bids. And so I would concur with that recommendation to award this to Northern Mountain Constructors. Uh, our share of the funds will uh, come from our gas tax fund, uh, which is more than capable of doing this right now. We'd like to uh, proceed into construction this summer. Uh, it will go pretty quickly. Our, our public work crew has uh, worked on the drainage and a lot of the prep work uh, on this, but this project is anticipated to go quickly. Andy, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Berry? We have a motion and a second to award the bid to Northern Mountain Construction. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item K, deliberate and act on. On contracts between the City of Raton and Envision IT Solutions to provide managed IT services. City of Raton Water Works and Raton Public Service, Raton Police Department, Raton Fire and EMS. We will take these there. I'm assuming they're all 
together in one contract. They are all together. Uh, they are uh, they are separate agreements because they come from the funding comes from right. different places, and so uh, we'll treat them all. But uh, yes, there I think you can consider them all together. Um, I would call on the city clerk uh, to give us detail uh, on this. Generally, I would say that uh, we're looking at uh, um, greater security measures that we've talked about with this IT provider, and there would be some additional cost to go along with that. Um, however, we have uh, worked with uh, uh, this contractor for a number of years, and it, we're, we're very happy with the service. Very responsive, doing a great job. Um, we have generally talked about upgrading our, our IT uh, uh, environment here at the city over the years, and, and uh, you never get done with that, but we've largely uh, done that. And a lot of the deficiencies that we noted back when we started talking about this were due to obsolescence of hardware, software, and uh, 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 security. So uh, I think we feel a lot more comfortable about it. However, uh, we, we want to keep enhancing that. And I do want to ask Michael Ann for uh, her take on the, uh, on the proposal. Good evening, Commission. Um, as City Manager uh, Barry stated, we do have three separate contracts because uh, we do have three separate funding streams for the police, fire, and then the city. Now, the city <coughs> also includes Raton Waterworks and RPS. So uh, we have 25 workstations amongst the three entities. We also have three servers, and then we pay a monthly fee in addition for cloud storage. Um, as he noted, uh, there is a small additional price increase this year. It's $5 per computer. Um, they have three separate security solutions that we'll be implementing, and it's mostly cyber security. Um, better malware protection, uh, protection a lot, uh, against a lot of things I don't understand. So, uh, But we do want to be protected. Uh, there are a lot of various threats out there. We've had some recently through email, um, and some of those, you know, they want you to click on an invoice, and it looks like it's coming from a legitimate email account. And so I, I think some of that they call phishing, and so you got to be a little bit careful. They're trying to get personal information. And so we're also going to be uh, improving some of our passwords. We're going to have to have some more complex requirements for passwords and probably be changing them more often. So, um, so like I said, that is the price increase this year. We also did upgrade the computers in the municipal court, and so probably mid-year they were added to our contract as well. So they're now supported by this agreement as well. Um, the police department uh, also has one additional server, and that's related to the new CAD server that was approved earlier in this fiscal year. So their contract went up a little bit as well. Uh, but like city manager Barry said, we've been very pleased with this company and uh, very little downtime. You know, we've had some power outages and things come up. Uh, we just replaced our battery backup because when we get like a little bit of a surge it would just completely shut down and so uh, we've had to replace that uh, but very little downtime and so they do monitor our systems 24 7. All right, any, any, questions? any questions for Michael? Good job. I'll move to approve the contract between City of Raton and the Envision IT solutions to provide Managed IT services. I'll second. A motion and a second to approve the contracts between the City of Raton and Envision IT Solutions. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Ooh, excuse me. Item L, deliberate and act on fiscal year 2023 E911 grant agreement project. Number 23-E-10, Mr. Berry. Mayor and Commission, in your packet, you do have a uh, cover letter uh, from uh, Department of Finance Administration, Local Government Division, and a grant agreement. Uh, and this is related to uh, our uh, emergency 911 system and funding for that. Uh, from the agreement, 
this grant agreement funds the public safety answering points at the city of Raton, uh, which also provides E911 related services to Colfax County, as well as E911 related reimbursements for travel training and geographic information systems, software, and hardware. The grant offer was uh, awarded from the State Board of Finance to the city of Raton uh, for on June 21st, 2022 for the the 23 uh, year and the amount of $124,650. And certainly our recommendation that the uh, commission would approve the grant agreement. Uh, there is one uh, issue in the uh, cover letter. They would like uh, uh, this executed uh, electronically. And so we would ask if the commission is uh, approves the agreement to give us, give, give the city manager the authority to uh, e-sign and submit the grant agreement. Any questions for Scott? I'll make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2023 E-911 grant agreement project number 23E10 with the permission for the city manager to e-sign via doctor sign. A second. Motion and a second to approve the agreement for the grant with Mr. Berry as a signatory. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item M. Deliberate and act on resolution 2022-34, fiscal year 23 per diem rate changes. Looks like Michael Land's coming for us. <laughs> Uh, commission in your packet uh, we do have for you this evening a resolution to update our uh, per diem rates you'll recall that back in uh, january we did adopt a new mileage and per diem policy every year in around april may uh, dfa does issue a, a memo uh, which i have included in your packet so you'll see in the memo that these rates do go into effect july 1st and so uh, DFA is required to publish these and get these out to all of the uh, entities around April or May every year. So despite having just approved the policy, it's now time to amend it. And so we could probably anticipate this next year around this time as well. So you'll see that uh, I've listed for you on the resolution what the new rates would be for your in-state per diem for overnight travel, and then there's also the special area in-state and an out-of-state. And then also the uh, partial day rates will increase slightly, and uh, the meal rates for actual reimbursements. Um, the mileage rate doesn't change because you'll recall that's based on the January 1 prior year IRS uh, mileage rate. So that wouldn't change until this coming January again. I uh, bring these changes to you and uh, request that we adopt them uh, to go into effect July 1st. Is there any questions? I make a motion to adopt resolution 2022 34, uh, the per diem rate changes for fiscal year 23. Second. Motion and a second to adopt resolution number 2023-34. Any further discussion? All in favor of vote by the sign of aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item in, deliberate and act on resolution 2022-35, the main financial report for fiscal year 22. Uh, Mayor and Commission, in your packet, we do have our reconciled uh, financial report uh, through May 31st. You'll see that, uh, well, that's actually a typo there. So where it says general fund ending cash and available cash, that should say 531. So the balance as of 531 uh, was 3213505 and then less our 1 12th uh, required reserve leaves us 2000 or 2,776,782.42. I've also listed for you the ending cash balances uh, in the remainder of our funds. And then for June, uh, the gross receipts distribution that was received reflects the April business activity. This is the final distribution for the year and uh, leaves us at 16.05% above our year-to-date budget projections. So 
Um, we've talked about this throughout the year, that we know that it was a result of various construction projects, but also uh, the online sales tax, even though we haven't been able to track that figure separately within the reports themselves. Um, also, the uh, general fund expenditures uh, are well below our year-to-date budget as well. Um, this is a result of the due diligence of our department heads working with the city manager and I to control costs and delay some of the expenditures until the next fiscal year. Um, also, we did submit the interim budget by the June 1st deadline. You'll see in your packet we did receive the approval letter from DFA. Um, the last page kind of gives us some items that we'll need to focus on to submit with the final budget. Uh, one of those would be, um, which we generally submit, a law enforcement uh, protection fund carryover letter. Uh, we currently have a balance of about $3,600 that would need to be spent uh, within the next two days, otherwise it'll be a carryover. Uh, there are some other schedules and things that we weren't required to submit with the interim that would get submitted with the final. So we're in the process this week of closing out the fiscal year. So once we are able to determine our ending cash balances, those cash balances will become the actual true beginning cash balance July 1st for the new budget. And then we'll have, uh, we'll bring to you July 26th the final budget end of year reports, final end of year budget adjustments, and then those would need to be submitted by July 31st. I've also included in your packet the uh, lodger's tax comparison. Um, we have well exceeded over $500,000 in collections. Uh, once we've uh, collected all of the June lodger's tax revenues, so that really is, is kind of a record, but like we've talked, it's really a result of just mm. higher nightly rates of the, the lodging establishments. So, um, But that means we have lots of lodgers tax to spend, and so I'm glad that we have some really good events this summer and that we were able to, to fund them. Yep. And then we also have the gas tax comparison for you in your packet. Uh, you'll see also we ended the year uh, very strong there. Uh, with uh, revenue collected of 269 uh, 651.50. And so that, uh, as the city manager stated earlier, we'll be using a lot of those funds to match uh, a lot of our DOT projects, uh, also the West Colfax that was awarded this evening. So do you, is there any specific questions? Yeah, it looks real good. I, I have uh, one line here under the capital projects fund. It's showing a negative, but that's on Jason's sanitation project. And so we're in the process of reclassifying some recycling carts and things that were purchased that got paid out of that line item that will actually get reclassified to come out of sanitation. So it's not really a negative. We just need to do the journal entries to fix that. Okay. Any comments, questions? I'll move to approve resolution 2022-35 May financial report Motion and a second to approve. Resolution 2022-35, the May financial reports. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, vote by the sign of aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item O, City Manager Report. Mr. Barry. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, item number one I'd like to uh, discuss is uh, we did get word yesterday that the plan to close four uh, VA clinics across the state is now off the table. Uh, so early to, er, uh, just kind of going down the, this article I'm, I'm looking at, you know, reference this. Earlier this year, the Department of Veterans Affairs discussed closing VA health clinics across the country, including clinics in Gallup, Raton, Española, and Las Vegas, New Mexico. Thanks to a bipartisan effort in Washington, those clinics will stay open. So that's uh, something that we 
I've worked on, I would really acknowledge the going back to our meeting with uh, Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez at the Shooter Theater. We had a, a very significant turnout from the community, a, a lot of veterans, uh, some veterans traveled from some distance to uh, come and make their thoughts known, but we also had some people who were not veterans, they're just concerned about uh, the loss of those services, and I do want to acknowledge that uh, that had a, uh, a significant impact, I think, on on the Congresswoman's efforts on this when she saw how important the local clinic was. Uh, some of us also attended her inspection of the, of the clinic, and she saw that that's a fairly new facility, and uh, 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 several hundred people present at the shooter, so uh, I think that thanks to a lot of the people that, that worked on this, is something we've talked about for a while, and uh, hopefully that clinic, the operation of that clinic is is safe now for the long term, Great. but you never know. It seems like we're always fighting for something, right? Um, I did, I also, on a uh, separate issue, uh, I did want to report to the commission, I have a an email here from uh, the staff of Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez, and uh, this is re in reference to a congressionally directed spending request that I had filed earlier with all of our congressional delegation, uh, and it was funding for our Kearney School uh, film production and workforce uh, facility that we had proposed. So here's the message. Um, hi Scott, hope you're well. We wanted to reach out with an update that this week we learned that the House Appropriations Committee included a funding amount of $3 million for the Raton Film Studio and Education Center in its fiscal year 2023 appropriations draft legislation. The inclusion of this funding in the Appropriations Committee draft bill is the second step in the funding process. We'll continue to fight for this funding as the bill moves to the full Appropriations Committee, consideration on the House floor, and negotiations with the Senate. We'll keep you apprised of any updates, and please don't hesitate to reach out with questions in the meantime. So that's from uh, Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez's staff, and uh, we, it's something that we've worked on uh, now for some months, uh, but that was a big hurdle to, to get uh, that $3 million in there. So we still have a long way to go. I would not say that funding is is 100% safe, but uh, I, I felt really good about getting that far with it. Um, and then uh, lastly, I would report to the commission that I have been in discussions with uh, representatives of the Nature Conservancy uh, and the Trust for Public Land. They're working together, and they have taken the lead on the uh, Bartlett Mesa Ranch uh, acquisition project, and they reported to me uh, this week and to the mayor uh, that they have closed on the property. They have purchased the property. Uh, they, as they said, there is a, a, a funding uh, deficiency of $1.2 million that we'll talk about as we go. And generally, uh, I would suggest to the commission that we look to uh, the legislature and capital outlay for a big portion of that. Uh, certainly, there will be some local funds in that. but. I think that's great news. That's those are some big goals, that big uh, ambitious goals that we had talked about here at the commission level in our planning sessions, and we've got some progress on on those things. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Thank you. Commissioner Chatterley, any other comments? Uh, just reminding everyone that our gross receipts tax rate changes on July first. Yes, it does. So, you know, it's the new rate. <laughs> It's a little less, which is awesome. Yes. Commissioner Giacomo. Mr. Chad. Bye. Mayor Pro Tem. I'm happy, thank you. <laughs> Me too. All oh, right. Well, don't forget to go to the Balloon Rally this weekend and have That's lots right. of fun this weekend. Big events Be happening safe. this weekend. Big Be events. Safe. All right. See you no other business. This meeting is adjourned.